Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a simple Notion page to keep track of all the books you're reading and the notes you take from them. As well as this, I'm gonna show you a way to create a tracker for all of the actions that you take from each book using the moat method. So you can actually put into practice the learnings. I've put a lot of thought into how I would use this page on each of my devices. So my iPad, my iPhone and my Mac, so that it's frictionless and easy no matter what device I'm using and what's near me at the time. Okay, so here it is. It's really simple. You have all of the books down the left hand side and all of the authors down the right hand side. And then you have this checkbox to say whether or not a book has been finished or not. I've split my books between fiction and non-fiction books. So the fiction books have this little blue emoji and the non-fiction books have the orange emoji, which makes it so much easier to tell one from the other. If we go into one of these, what we'll be able to see is you've got the title of the book, you've got whether or not it's a fiction or a non-fiction book, so that's just a select property. Then you've got the date that it was started. Then you've got the author of the book. Then we have the format, so whether it's an audio book that I'm consuming it on a physical book or a Kindle, the year I read it and the date it was finished. Then I have a checkbox to say whether or not it was done and this is purely so I could see that list view and my OCD wanted them all aligned. Then finally we have something called moat which I'll get on to later and whether or not that action has been taken. So if we scroll down what we can see is something that I love putting at the top of like almost all my pages is a table of contents which is built-in function into Notion and it just means as long as you've got headers in your page then basically you can click around really easily from the top which is very useful when you have such a big document like book notes because then you don't have to go scrolling all the way through. I have three sections in my book notes. One is book review, the second is book chapters and book summary. Now I know that those chapters are also in the table of contents but sometimes Notion does this weird thing where it opens a page with the toggles closed which can be quite annoying so this is just really easy I can see the chapters at the top. So if we scroll down, I guess book review is fairly self-explanatory as are book chapters. And I guess book summary also is, but I've added one extra thing here. I've added a key. So for the majority of my book notes, it's just me taking notes from the book, split by chapters and then sub chapters. But one thing I've added is where I add in my own notes and my thoughts, my opinions, I highlight those things in yellow. So like here, for example, references where they reference another book, an article or someone else I highlight in blue. Quotes should be green and any actions to take after reading this book should be red. I haven't used the quote so much, but there's an example of blue. This is a book that's been recommended. And what it means is that when I'm finished taking the notes and in note taking mode, I can go back through it and really quickly scan to see where are the bits that I can take out. The other thing I do is that I might bold a statement if it's a key take away it just makes it easier when going back through to pick out the most important things now obviously this isn't something you want to set up every single time you add a book so this is where templates come in so if we go back here what we can do is we can add a template and I have a template for a non-fiction book and a fiction book so if we just go into the non-fiction book a second I've got the emoji pre-populated I've got the fact that it's a non-fiction book pre-populated and then I've got the year pre-populated because that only really needs changing once a year then I've got my table of contents in there and my headings all ready to go. I also like having small text and full width, but that's a personal preference. Now I consume non-fiction in a different way to fiction, which I think most people do. And I'm a lot more likely to want to take notes from a non-fiction than I do with a fiction book. So my fiction template is a little simpler. I just have a book review section and a book summary section. The key probably won't be used in all honesty. And the only reason I like to keep a book summary for fiction books is that I have a terrible, terrible memory. As I'm going through it, I'll I'll make some notes about what on earth is going on with the story, the main characters or something. And this is especially useful for when life gets in the way and I end up taking a week or two weeks or a two month break in the middle and then having to come back to the story. And what happens is I usually pick up the book and go, I have no idea what's going on. Now I'm stubborn, so I probably won't start again. But what I found really useful is having that summary because then I can, before I pick that book back up again, I can scan through my notes here, see what's going on and then carry on reading. Now, I said that this would be a simple template so I just want to point out here some of the things that I haven't added and the reasons for not adding them. One of the main ones is probably status. Now I know people like having a property for status that is to read, reading or read. I like the tick box approach because it's obviously all aligned down the left hand side and I can go in and very easily, satisfyingly tick it and untick it. Now the other thing I haven't added is a category view. I tend to read the same genre of book for the most part especially when it comes to non-fiction and I don't see the point in wasting time trying to categorize things. 
they all almost fall into the whole self-development, personal development type genre for me. So it's a waste of time. I don't think it adds anything. I don't need it to be overcomplicated. Thirdly, I know a lot of people like having a rating for a book. Again, I'm not really sure what purpose it adds. Every book I've read, I've probably taken some insights out of in one way or another. I just don't think it's ever added anything. Does it matter if the life-changing magic of tidying was a five-star or a four-star book? Not really. It's not necessary and it's kind of a waste of time, in my opinion. And finally, adding the book cover as a picture or an image. Again, I've tried this in the past, but I don't think it really adds anything. Yes, the gallery view is quite nice, but actually when I've tried it, because book covers tend to be portrait, it actually looks worse because there's a load of like white space around it. And even when you can zoom in, you then get the whole, don't get the whole title. And I just don't think it's necessary. Okay, so there's now two ways I can add a book from here. One, I can click this new button and then click one of these templates, or I can do the drop down and choose straight away a non-fiction or fiction book. So if we go for non-fiction and I say, okay, I want to read Big Magic next. I've clicked non-fiction, so it's gonna pre-populate with the non-fiction orange book emoji for me. It's gonna set the status to non-fiction and then it's gonna pre-populate with the year 2021. It's also going to pre-populate all of these things ready for us to go in and make our book notes. So all we have to do is add in today's date, add an author, then the format. So I actually have this on audiobook and Kindle, but I'm going to probably listen to the audiobook. And then none of these are things that I need to touch now because they're all to do with when I finish the book. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, that's now come to the top of the table. When I finish the book, I'll go in and, and check the box, but until then we'll leave it. If I want to add some notes, I click on the book, I scroll down. If I'm in a rush, I'll add something really quickly here. If I'm not, I will maybe scope out the book at the beginning and write down all the chapters. These are amazing chapters. And then as I go, I'll just add the notes as I go, which is great. So that's pretty much how easy it is to add a book and keep track of all the books you've read. You can sort these in any order you want and you can filter these. If you only wanted to see the books that you hadn't read, you just go in, add a filter, go to your checkbox of done and select unchecked and these are the books that I'm currently reading. Okay, so that's great. The tracker is all set up and it's really easy to use and we can go in and add notes all the time. But like I said, if you really want to get the most out of a book, you ideally want to be able to take actions from that book. Whilst I come up with actions all the time, what I've done is I've implemented something here so I can keep track of those actions. MO stands for my one action to take. So if I open this back up, at the end of the book, I scan back through my notes and I say, okay, let me not overwhelm myself, but let me take one action away from this book at the very, very least. And that's what goes into this here. And the reason we do it as a property is so we can create a different view, which we'll come on to in a second. And then there's a property here just to say whether or not we've taken that action. So if we come back here, and we flip to the moat view. Now this is a table view that I've set up specifically. What you've got is down the left-hand side, again, you've got all the books, and then you've got my one action to take. So after every book, I've written down an action to take, and then there's a checkbox to say whether or not it's been taken. And as you can see, I haven't taken a lot of actions recently. But one thing to note is I also have actions from fiction books. There's still a trigger or something that makes me think of something. Again, it doesn't have to be directly related. So after I read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, I actually thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to start a book of regret and this is a really easy way of me to keep track of those actions. Okay so that's how I take notes whether I'm on the Mac or on my iPad. Very easy, super quick, frictionless, open the app, start typing. But there are a lot of times when I just want to take notes on my phone because that's all I have to hand and it's the one thing that's pretty much always with me and it was my phone that I had in mind when I was setting up this as a list view because it's just so much cleaner and nicer to view on your phone. Now Notion isn't set up for quick entry on your phone, but we can use widgets on the iPhone to our advantage. So if we switch over to the phone, hold down on the home screen, click add, search for Notion, click add widget, click done, and then tap and hold and edit widget. And then what you can do is you can select your workspace and your page. Now I already have two set up here, so I can go into my book notes, it will open Notion up and there I have a full list of all of the books that I have. So if I now wanted to go and add some notes into Big Magic because I was listening to it, I'd click it, I'd scroll down and I'd either make some quick entry notes here or I could go down if I had a bit more time and write it in the relevant section, which is super useful. I can still add a new book here if I wanted to. I have all the same functionality and I can switch my view so that I can see my mode view 
and then I could see all the actions that I needed to take. Remember, the focus should be on the reading and the taking of the notes, not the templates or the Notion page. Keep it as simple and as frictionless as possible. And if you want to make more time for reading and making these notes, then be sure to check out my video on how to get more done. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.